Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to return to my Raspberry Pi Zumo robot and specifically I'm going to take a couple of optical sensors, a couple of these, and we're going to mount them on the front of the robot just under here where I left a gap for doing that quite a while ago now and this will enable me to program the robot to become a line follower. Right, well here we are with the Pi Zumo robot I've built in previous videos. Just to get you up to speed what's going on here, I put this robot together in my Raspberry Pi Robotics number two video. I built the Zumo chassis of which you can see the robot mounted on here. And then in Raspberry Pi Robotics number three video, I mounted this Raspberry Pi Zero on the back and made the whole thing independent. And we drove it around with a wireless keyboard. And then in video number four, we drove it around over a network using SSH. So this time we're gonna build on that again and mount some of these reflectance sensors. This is an Adafruit reflectance sensor. There's one on the little packet look, which is, uh, there it is in, in the back. We're gonna have two of these mounted on the front of the robot, just under here, so it can sense lines. And the way these basically work, as I showed in my um, Raspberry Pi GPO inputs video, is that these basically have two components to them. They've got an infrared LED, which fires out infrared and they've got a phototransistor and if this thing is looking at a surface like a white surface it'll reflect back the infrared and uh, make a connection and we can use that to control an input on the uh, Raspberry Pi. You can see a lot more of that and how these sensors work as I say in my Raspberry Pi GPIO inputs video. If you want to catch up on all of that lot go to explainingcomputers.com, go to the video section, click on the Pi Zumo robot and you'll find not just the videos, but all the wiring diagrams from the previous videos. You'll need some of those for this video, and you'll find some code. And of course, I'll put all the stuff there I need for this video. So you've got everything you need if you want to follow through this project. So anyway, you now know roughly where we're going, where we're starting from. So we'll get on with putting this project together. So on a project like this, it's always good to do a test before you start drilling holes and soldering things together. And I'm going to be using two of these reflectance sensors on this project, and one of them is, is here, but one of them I've got on the side of the robot. It's blue tacted at the moment, just held in temporarily, and it's got some um, jumper leads, which as you can see go to this small breadboard. And the breadboard is also connected into the, the Pi. This is in addition to all the wiring I've got to run the motors on the Pi. And we've got some uh, current limiting resistors and pull down resistors. D bit difficult to see what's going on in this form. But if we look at this diagram, which is basically what I had in my Raspberry Pi GPO inputs video to show you how you could use the reflectance sensor. But rather than having the sensor on the board, we've got it mounted, as I've just said, on the, the robot here temporarily. And the reason for this, I want to get the exact right height of this sensor and check everything is working. So if we look at some code for this, here we are on the uh, Raspberry desktop. I really must update this Raspberry Pi Zero to Pixel at some point, but I'll leave it like this at the moment. And as you can see, it's some fairly basic code. We've got some code at the top, which will uh, import the GPIO library on the Pi. We will then set the pin numbering for pin 12 as our GPIO import, which is what we connected to in that diagram I've just shown you. And then we've got a little try finally loop uh, somewhere around here I can't highlight very well. It seems to be today. What am I doing? Let's try and show you the code. There we are. We've got a little try finally loop. In the try bit, it's going to say while true. That's whilst it can see white. It can see some reflection, some reflection sensor, it'll print white, else it'll print black. And finally, on the end, it'll clean up the GPIO pins when we crash out of this with Control C. So let's actually run this piece of code. I'll use run from the menu because so you can see what I'm doing. Could press F5, and that'll print hopefully in a second. There we are, I've print the world white, and I'll just pull this across the screen in case you can't see that. And if we go back to the, the robot itself, it's clearly looking at white at the moment. But if I take this piece of black card and push it underneath, it'll go black. So we can be able to sense where we can see a line and where it can't see a line. White, black, uh, white, and black. And as I said, the critical thing here for me is getting the height of this sensor just right. Because if the sensor is too high up, it won't actually reflect back and see the black card. One of the problems I've got here is I'm working under movie light, so there's thousands of watts of light in this room bouncing everywhere. I'm gonna to have to get my sensors really close to the floor or it's not gonna see the, the black and the white. You might see that if I just raise my robot a little bit, that's seeing white over black, which clearly it isn't. It's just because of the actual distance from the surface itself. So there we are, we've got the basics working. So now what I'm gonna do is to actually wire this up a bit more permanently. I'm going to use a bit of this with a little circuit board, make a bit of circuit board to more permanently connect up our two reflectance sensors. 
OK, since I saw you last, I've been beavering away. I particularly made this little circuit board here, which has got all the current limiting resistors and the pull down resistors we need for two sensors. Here's a, one of the sensors over there. And uh, these are all wired in. There's some soldering on the back, marvellous soldering for me over there. Forgot to show you doing my soldering. That's probably not a bad idea. Not marvellously good at soldering, but that's, that'll, that'll work. And uh, this is wired into the top of the Pi. You can see we've got all our GPIO leads coming in here, both from this circuit board and also from the, the motor controller as before. And you might have noticed I've still got the sensors here actually wired in on jumper leads. And the reason for that is so I can remove them from these and thread them through the front and put them in. So at the moment, things aren't still fully wired up, but we're getting closer. So if we look at some code, here we've got some code which I've written up, which is just a little bit extended on what we had before. Now we're actually setting up not just the uh, input, but also for GPIO output, so we can tr control our motor backwards and forwards. And in our uh, loop, now I've got it set up so it says, if you can see one of the sensors is on, it's going to turn on one of the motors, make it go forward. If not, it'll have it turned off. And the same thing for the second GPIO pin we're using now, pin 16, do the same thing. So if we actually run this code, let's go and run this and go run and uh, run module. Nothing will apparently happen other than the fact it'll go to a screen to show the code is running. But if we come back to the robot, what I'm going to do is to take the sensors and just to hold them against the surface here so there's clearly nothing reflecting back because they're held flat against the surface. And we're going to turn on the robot's motor controller, nothing will happen. If I lift the sensors, the robot comes forward like that. Let's just take it back a little bit. It's clearly tethered at the moment. If I lift one sensor, goes one way, other sensor goes the other way. So I lift them both, it goes forward. So we have the basis of this working now. The, the, the problem I'm having is the sheer amount of light it reflects back. So these sensors are actually re responding not just to light reflected from the surface, but also all the light from the movie lights. But basically the process is going okay. We can control one motor or the other by moving the sensors, by controlling how much light hits that phototransistor. So what I need to do now is to get these sensors, I'll just flick that off. I need to get these mounted under the robot, under the front, so they actually are exactly the right distance from the surface, and maybe put some sort of shrouds around them to stop any light getting in. I think some light gets in just around the edges and through the plastic at the top here, and that I'm gonna stop to make this work on camera. So we're getting there. Hopefully in the next segment, we'll have a proper line following robot. So, I've now got the robot pretty much finished off here. You can see it here. We've got the circuit board on the top with the resistors on it, which can, goes to our sensors. And on the front, you can see the sensors are now mounted, hopefully at the right distance from the surface so it'll actually work properly. So if we go to the code, here is the code we've got. Same as before initially, just sets up the uh, GPIO stuff. And then I've expanded out my little loop slightly so that now if it sees one sensor on, if it's seeing white on that sensor, it is effectively turning a motor forward, but not turning it backwards. But if it doesn't see white, if it sees black in front of a motor, say on the left side, it will actually reverse the motor. So the thing will spin in a far smaller circle. If we just simply turn one motor off, it'll have got a large turning circle. If we move one motor forward, one motor backwards, it'll have a much smaller turning circle. And of course we do the opposite for the other side. We turn the motor forward or backwards, again, depending on whether it's black or white. So there we are. If we now run this code, you knew that was coming, didn't you? There we are, let's run the code. And, um, oh, I haven't saved it, dearie me. Must save the code, there we are. And uh, that's okay, and it'll now run along. And hopefully now, if I just take the robot and uh, disconnect from it, it's umbilical to the HDMI. And we can take this, and here, as you can see, I've got a nice track all laid out, a bit of black card onto white card to make a little race track for the robot. And we'll put the robot down there with the line in the middle of its sensors. And if I now turn on the power to the motors, to the motor controller, we'll see what happens. Let's uh, have a go. It's going along. Oh, and it's sensing the line. It's sensing the edge of the black and white. And it's going around the track. That is an amazing result. This has been a testing video, lots of different things that had to work, building electronics, getting bits of code working, getting the sensors working, even building a little racetrack here, and it's all worked in the end. I've done lots of different project videos here on explaining computers, and for me at least, 
This is the most satisfying, to get to that point where all these ideas can come together at the end and something physical and practical can happen as we see in front of us. This is not the most amazing piece of robotics ever. Oh dear, it went offline there. But at least it's pulled itself back. It's got a mind of its own, hasn't it? Well, maybe not quite a mind of its own. It's not exactly the most sophisticated artificial intelligence in the world. But no, no learning going on for a start. But is it, this is at least a robot which is sensing the world around it through two sensors, responding to those sensors and changing its activity based on that, which is a, a fantastic thing. So for me, at least, as I said, a brilliant result. This has been my fifth Raspberry Pi Robotics video, and we've progressed from flashing an LED all the way to having our Zumo platform that can be controlled by keyboard or over SSH, and can even drive itself around using its optical sensors as we've seen in this video. Now, of course, there's lots of things that could be added, not least a camera, but in my next Raspberry Pi Robotics video, I'm going to sidestep a bit and move to another platform. I'm going to move from the Zumo to this thing which is the Devastator Tank Mobile Robot Platform from DF Robot. So in my next video on Raspberry Pi Robotics, I'm going to be opening this thing up, lots of parts inside, putting it together, mounting a Raspberry Pi Zero W on the top, and starting to control that. And I think lots of things will stem from this as my new robot platform. But of course, I might come back to the Zumo for other things. I might let them meet. You never know. All sorts of things can happen here on Explaining Computers. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.